Protesters in Sudan have agreed to end their campaign of civil disobedience and to resume talks to form a transitional government. That's according to Reuters. The reported breakthrough follows a deadly crackdown on protesters last week that left the streets of the capital eerily empty. CNN's Ben Wiedemann has more, and we must warn you, some of the images in this report are disturbing. Shops shuttered, normally busy streets deserted. Pro-democracy protesters have launched a nationwide campaign of civil disobedience. After the paramilitary rapid support forces led an attack on a long-running sit-in outside defense headquarters. In the chaos that followed, they killed more than 100 people, according to the Central Committee of Sudan doctors, in the bloodiest day yet since the Sudanese uprising began in December of last year. The rapid support forces were previously known as the Janjaweed, irregulars used by the Sudanese regime to crush a rebellion in the western province of Darfur. The International Criminal Court and the U.S. government hold the Janjaweed responsible for committing genocide in Darfur. The opposition, led by the Sudanese Professionals Association, is demanding the military hand power to civilians immediately and is calling for an independent investigation into last week's killings. The men in uniform, however, are shrugging off the demands. Addressing his troops last week, Rapid Support Force Commander Mohamed Hamdan Daglo known simply as Hamedti, sent a stern warning to protesters. We will not permit chaos, he said. Code words in the Arab world for no power to the people. Uh, Sarah Abdel Jalil, based in the UK, is a member of the Sudanese Professionals Association. She stresses the uprising has repercussions well beyond Sudan's the, the borders. Sudan the success of this um, revolution is a threat to a lot of regimes in the region. It is about justice. It's not just about the people of Sudan. And in a region where autocrats hold sway, this revolution matters. Ben Wiedemann, CNN, London.